Alrighty, everybody, welcome to another episode of Connecting the Pack. Uh, in today's conversation, I am joined by Ava Haddad. Um, Ava is a graduate from NC State University's design program and is currently entering into um, healthcare, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and today we will try to talk more about her interesting background, uh, where she she has um, some Lebanese heritage in addition to American heritage, um, and we'll try to explore some of her artwork and how that ties in to who she who she is as, as a person who's coming from this very interesting slash mixed uh, background. Um, so, um, Ava, welcome to the studio. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so um, I would love to start off with um, uh, sort of understanding how you or why you chose to go into the design world um, and, and, and sort of what, you know, what inspired you or motivated you to kind of go into that. So maybe you mm -hmm. can walk us through, um, you know, the motivation that drove you to enter into the, the program. Sure. So um, I have been interested in art my entire life um, from as early as I can remember. I've just loved it. I've loved any art form. Um, it's always something that I found really fun. Um, I've just always been very passionate about art and um, design. Um, I did it a lot in high school. I mm. um did a lot of oil pastel work and a lot of painting. Um, and then I, as I was getting ready to um, apply to colleges, I, I figured I would go into design because, you know, art was such a huge part of my life. And I was like, okay, how can I make a career out of this? Mm -hmm. um, and so I looked a little bit into, you know, different design programs, um, saw that State had a really great one. Um, and I decided to apply to graphic design um, there honestly wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason to why I chose graphic specifically. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I really didn't know much about it and I'd never done any sort of like digital artwork. Um, so I just, you know, I was like, okay, this is like a practical form of design. You know, I can make a career out of this. So why not? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Um, and then... Yeah, I switched from graphic design after about two years at State um, into just the art and design program. Um, I I found that graphic design was, I don't know the right word. Um, well, first of all, a lot of it was very new, um, and I felt like I wasn't getting a lot of the support that I needed um, to, mm -hmm. like, really properly learn, um, like, a lot of the tools, specifically, like, the Adobe Suite Okay. Um, there was not a lot of guidance there and that was, you know, that's, that's kind of the whole program. Um, so it's, it can be frustrating if you're trying to learn that and you're very new to it and, um, there's not a lot of, you know, support. Yeah. Um, and I also just, I was unsure at that point, um, if I wanted to continue doing graphic design, I felt like it was a little too narrow um, for where I was at because I wasn't, I don't know, I, I just, I felt like I hadn't explored um, other design careers enough to, you know, feel confident in staying in that program. So I decided to switch to art and design. Um, I felt that it was a little more open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up taking some really cool classes. Well, I don't know <laughs> if other people would say they're cool, but um, well, start, start naming those classes, and then people uh, will decide. <laughs> quilting. <laughs> okay. um, I took a quilting studio. Yeah. Um, my nana, she's she's a big quilter still, and she makes the most beautiful quilts. Um, and I've always wanted to learn how to sew, so I was like, okay, let me let me do quilting, and it was it was wow. a really cool experience. Um, and then after that, I took another like. Um, fibers studio and I ended up making a top which was so fun and so challenging yeah. um and I don't know it was just it was a really cool experience and I think it kind of helped me to get out of my head about um design just because I don't know I, I felt kind of boxed in for a while um and I didn't really know what to do with that so I think mm -hmm. taking some um 
you know, different and maybe less structured studios really helped with that. Yeah. Um, and I also did like animation, which was really cool. Oh, wow. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> for my, so yeah, yeah, that was intense. Um, <laughs> lots of drawings, but, um, for my final senior studio, um, I actually did a graphic design project as my capstone project. Oh, um, can you expand on that graphic design project? What was it about? Yeah. So it was a website. Um, I, so my minor was entrepreneurship in the arts and throughout that minor um i did a series of projects i guess um centered around this like hypothetical like art therapy company that like i created and had to write a business plan for um and so i had a lot of information like around that already um and i thought it would be cool to um incorporate that into my final project and create a website like for this you know hypothetical company mm -hmm. um and i had no experience in website design i've never done it before yeah <laughs> um I so don't i was either. like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i was like um okay i'll i'll learn i'll um it'll be a challenging experience but you know hopefully i'll get a lot out of it and i don't know it it also be cool to um see you know, the the project that I had worked on, you know, with the hypothetical company, like it, it would be cool to see that kind of brought to life and um, see it visualized in a way. Yeah. Um, so and into that, like I incorporated a lot of um, illustration and just sketching and stuff, which um, felt really nice, you know, to kind of have a balance between more like I don't want to say rigid because it's not always rigid, but um, a balance between like just being able to get stuff out of my head and onto paper and, you know, the style I want and the colors I want and, mm -hmm. you know, create something that feels like me um, balanced with something that would be very polished and professional and marketable. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a cool project. Um, and I'm glad that I chose to do that because. I feel like I learned uh, a lot. Yeah. So I want to maybe take a step back here mm -hmm. and ask you a couple of questions about, um, I want to pick up on a couple of things you mentioned. Okay. Um, first off, I'm glad you took us through like a like a tour of your, you know, <laughs> yeah. a couple of years <laughs> that you spent in the program. I, uh, you know, that was great. We got to kind of see, you know, a snippet of how things were. Yeah. Um, uh, but I want to try to maybe... Um, ask you about the difference between quilting and sewing mm -hmm. i don't think i have the knowledge to, okay. <laughs> to like really differentiate between the two right and i'm sure maybe some people listening to this they, they might not know yeah. the difference so how can you maybe kind of simplify it to you know someone who has not maybe kind of who isn't familiar with the difference between the two? Right. So I would say quilting is um, maybe a form of sewing or something that you can do with mm -hmm. sewing. Um, so there's, you know, lots of different kinds of sewing. You can, um, you know, hand stitch things. There's, I think embroidery would count in there. Um, obviously, like using a sewing machine. Um, and then, you know, you can, you can make a lot of different things. Um, so we focused on like traditional quilts like blankets mm. um and <laughs> yeah. yeah which was really cool um we kind of learned about the history of quilts and um you know a lot of them used to be made from scraps of fabric um just throughout history that's how they've been made um because you know people didn't have a lot of money and they used what they had um and so I'd say like a defining feature of quilts is that it's it has a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like, I guess there's three layers traditionally. Um, so you have this like bottom piece of fabric and then in the middle you have this, um, oh, what do they call it? It's um, like a, a wool layer or like a cotton layer or... Um, almost like kind of foamy there's a specific word mm. i can't i can't think of it we can um, call it the midsection <laughs> yeah the the midsection um it's kind of yeah. you know it's the plushy part okay. um and then you have your top part which would be like your pattern part or your um you know it'll have your design on it 
Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's comprised of like a ton of tiny little squares or triangles or whatever shape you want to do um, that you've sewn together. And so you have to kind of, you know, get all your layers and then put them on top of each other and then sew all of them together. So sew through all the three layers. Um, and then you create like your border around it. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of work. Wow. Like a, a lot of work. Um, and when you took the course, did mm-hmm. you have to design one thing or was it just a multi- multiple projects happening throughout, uh, you know, the semester? Right. So we had several little projects. Uh-huh. Um I'd say um, we started off with just kind of like um, quilt squares. So so quilting squares are usually, a co- well, at least some of the traditional quilts are comprised of like, you know, um, like nine squares maybe. Mm. Um, and each square has like a ton of different pieces in it. So it's just, it's kind of a way to like help organize your quilt um, and make it a little easier. So kind of like blocks that you work on yeah. at a time um, and then you sew them all together. Um, so we started off just, you know, learning how to, first of all, learning how to sew, like mm-hmm. using a sewing machine um, and then working on um, like the quilting squares. Um, and then we kind of worked our way up to it. Like our final project, um, my professor was like, you know, you can do whatever you want with this, but you need to create some sort of quilt. And um, most of us did like traditional quilts. Um, We just chose a style that we liked. Um, Like I made, um, I was inspired by a kind of quilt called just an art quilt. Um, And that's, yeah, it's, that's very open-ended, but Uh um, I wanted a piece that was not very like functional (laughs) for warmth. Right. Um, I wanted something I could like put on my wall. Um, is that what they call avant-garde? Like a type of design that's just kind of, art yeah. for the sake of art? Yeah, art for the sake of art. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and so I wanted to kind of, um, we were we were very encouraged to, you know, use traditional aspects of quilting and, um, you know, really learn about their tradition because it's such a huge tradition. And it's so, I don't know, it's such a cool thing and such a, um, I don't know, it's just, it's it's an awesome um, mm. thing that women have been doing forever. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, she wanted us to, um, you know, do traditional stuff and then put her own spin on it and get a little creative, get a little funky. What was um, your spin? <laughs> so I, I cut chunks out of my quilt um, oh, wow. okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to say that. So I created kind of um, windows in my quilt, if that makes sense. Yeah. Just a couple. Um, and I also did like kind of a, a raw, like ruffled border, mm-hmm. if that makes sense, on one of the sides. So like I had a finished border on like um, three out of four sides, and then the fourth was just kind of like raw um, fabric. Um, and then all of the fabric that I used, I thrifted. So I found it secondhand. Right. Because um, it could get pretty expensive, like, when you're oh, going yeah, shopping for it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I cut out chunks of my quilt, and I created little windows with um, sheer fabric in the cutouts. So I, I found this, like, multicolored sheer fabric, um, and I, like, sewed it into the windows. Mm. It was it was a difficult um, endeavor. I don't know. I don't really know how I did it, but <laughs> wow! But um, you did it. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Um, <laughs> Gosh, now I feel like I'm gonna have to see an image of that to kind of put things into like. Yeah, I can <laughs> show you. <laughs> sure. um, yeah. Wow, this is this is fascinating. And then you also mentioned um, a top that you designed. So that yeah. would be was that sewing? Um, also? So it was actually quilted top. Oh wow! Um, so <laughs> both. I mean, it's. I would say it's all sewing. Like quilting is a, a form of sewing, because mm-hmm. um, you know that's what you're doing to create the quilt. Um, so this top, I've never, never designed clothes before. I've never made clothing before, but I decided <laughs> that that's what I was gonna do. Um, and so I kind of created my own patterns. Um, I I have a bad habit of winging things a lot. <laughs> a lot. When it comes to design, yeah. When when I should when general. I should both um, <laughs> both. Yeah. I you know I was very loose with my measurements, which oh. probably 
was my great idea. But it worked. Yeah. It worked out. Oh, um, nice. And at the end of the day, you know, it could fit me. I, I still have it. I can wear it. It fits me. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, and yeah, I quilted. Um, so in my top, it was only two layers. Um, I did not include the like plushy middle layer. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was kind of a thicker, like a, a white denim material for the inside. Um, and then the outside, again, I thrifted all of my fabrics, um, and I decided on my color scheme and my design, um, and I quilted the outside and then, um, attached it to the inside and then I had to sew all of the pieces together, um. Hmm. So would that be considered like a cumbersome process? Like very. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's wow. again. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> I could not recreate it. You improvised. <laughs> um, yeah. I just, you know, I, I tend to do that. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> how, um, how long ago was that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, um, a little over a year ago. Wow. Um, that was. Or yeah, maybe exactly a year ago, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was um, spring semester last year. So when you were, whether it be this this top that you designed mm -hmm. or another project that you worked on, w w what kind of keeps you, what sort of zone do you think is, is most optimal when it comes to working on these projects? Like, is there a particular environment where you feel like, mm -hmm. oh, gosh, the ideas are pouring. I feel like I'm, I'm, there present and i'm right. you know working on this project and i think it is going in the right direction right so is there throughout the years is that something that you discovered or perhaps gradually started to understand more about or was it always there you like you knew what environment you should be in mm -hmm. you knew what sort of zone you should be in you know kind of uh involved in and w right. w what can you tell me about this um so it's I feel like it's been the same for me for most of my life. Um, starting maybe in high school when, um, you know, I would have art class just for, you know, it'd be like an hour long period. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I ended up having like four hour long studios in college. And wow. Um, hours. Yeah. Which, which <laughs> during those, I will say I was, I don't know. I feel like I didn't get much done like during studio as mm -hmm. much as just going in there on my own time. Um, I I think with any project I'm working on, whether it's for school or just, you know, my own thing, yeah. um, I definitely have to kind of get in a zone. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's definitely a mental zone. Um, I kind of just, you know, hyper fixate on whatever I'm working on. And that's how I get like the most progress done, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, you know, usually I'll, for lack of a better term, like be in the zone for, <laughs> you know, an hour or two or maybe three. Um, and I'll just kind of like, you know, I'll be listening to music and I'll just kind of, um, be working on it for as long as I can straight. And then, you know, I'll like kind of look up, take a breath, and I'm like, okay, it's been two hours. Like, let's, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, you need a breath of fresh air. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> um, and then I'll forget about it and then come back to it and do the same thing. Um, so I, I've i learned that I really don't get much done um, if I'm just like, oh, you know, I have I have half an hour. I can sit down and, and work on this painting or work on this. Like that, mm -hmm. to me, I'm like, that's pointless, which sounds kind of silly, but yeah. Um, just personally, it's it's better if I can kind of like, it's almost like a ritual. Like I kind of get into my mindset. I, you know, get whatever I need to be comfortable. I kind of, you know, have to have a space where I can tune everything out and just focus mm. on what I'm doing. That is fascinating. I mean, when, when you talk to maybe writers, you know, mm -hmm. you get to, some people would tell you, you know, especially, you know, scholars or people in the, yeah. in the academic world, they would tell you that they have to retreat. They would mm -hmm. have to go to a particular spot that is quiet, that is away from everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's when the ideas just start pouring. And that's when they can get creative with whatever piece that they're working on. Yeah. So kind of detached from all the noise, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, so, but it's interesting that you mentioned you would listen to music. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so you're yeah. kind of bringing in that noise right. and you're, you're designing, you're working mm -hmm. on the project. Uh, is that, has that always also been the case or were there times when a quiet environment is more, most optimal? Yeah. So for me, I honestly, I've, so I've always loved music. I'm sure a lot of people, um, you know, most people love music, but, mm -hmm. um, for me, I get most of my best ideas and my most creative thinking, like while I'm listening to music. Yeah. Um, and I also create playlists for everything. So, um, <laughs> like I, for example, okay, so I studied abroad this past summer um, in Florence, Italy, yeah. um, and I have been working on a painting um, just while I've been home, like around my experience while I was there. Um, while you were in Italy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I call it kind of like, I've been doing these brain dump paintings lately where I just kind of um, kind of pour out everything I can. Mm -hmm. a, a, around like a certain situation or time period or like you know whatever I want to want the subject of the painting to be um so you know I kind of I have certain colors that come to mind that I want to incorporate or certain images um and yeah so um I had a I had a playlist that I listened to all summer while I was there um, and that's kind of the playlist that I was listening to as I was like kind of drafting this painting and kind of deciding what I wanted to include in it. Um, and then I actually created um, a new playlist like specifically for while I was working on this painting. <laughs> okay. um, and it was kind of, you know, I pulled a lot from the OG playlist um, and then I added some things um, just because, you know, um, I don't know. It's it's literally just all in my head. Like the the vibe of for for lack of a better term, the vibe mm -hmm. um, of my painting versus like you know experiencing everything in real life um, that I did last summer. Um, you know, there's a little there is some difference, and I wanted like my mindset to reflect that. Like my mindset, like reflecting back on my summer versus like being there and experiencing it is different and it feels different mm -hmm. um and so i needed like a playlist that felt different for right. my if that makes any sense at all yeah <laughs> uh, i know it's long. i know no, no, this is this is incredible because yeah. I, I never really <laughs> thought that i would talk to someone who would tell me that you know music is what i need to get you know creative yeah or yeah on this project right. so it is you know i guess for me that is it's it's a new sort of idea that I'm kind of contemplating right now, right. And, you know, further understanding. Yeah. But do you, do you ever think there's, um, do you, do you hit something called maybe, well, in the writer's world, go to writer's mm -hmm. block, but is there something in the art world where you feel like, oh, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I'm kind of being blocked mm -hmm. right now and I need to step away and do something okay yeah so how absolutely. how would you describe that experience or if there's an example um, you can mention it'd also be helpful frustrating <laughs> <laughs> um so i actually experienced that a ton um the first couple years of college mm. um up until like probably mid junior year i just was so um well first of all i didn't have a lot of free time to like focus on my own art you know it was all designing for school um, and then I think I was so frustrated with that aspect of it. And it took, you know, it took all my creative energy to like do my, my projects for school. Um, and then, um, it was a, a form of design that was so different than what I was used to, um, like back in high school and stuff. So I don't know, for a while I just felt really defeated. Mm -hmm. Um, and it made me feel really bad about myself actually. Um, because, um, I think so much of my, my self image and like, you know, my external image, um, is like, okay, I am an artist and mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't creating what I wanted to, to be creating. And I wasn't like, um, I don't know. I wasn't able to like express myself in that way during that time. And so I, you know, I, I honestly felt like a fraud. I was like... <laughs> You know, I have all everyone in my life is like, oh, 
like Ava's Ava's the artist. She's the art. You know, she she always is doing art and. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm always doing art. And I just wasn't doing art. Right. <laughs> and I felt, I don't know, it made me feel so bad about myself. Yeah. It sounds so silly, but yeah. um, it's true. I I had a really hard time with that. Um, and then I was able to just kind of start um, getting out of that a little bit. Um, junior year, um, I think... A lot of, and I think this is a very common thing that a lot of artists or just artsy people experience. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, obviously your art is very personal, whatever form it is. Um, and it's, you know, like when you're putting something out there for other people to see, it's like um, all of it, you know, it's coming from your brain. Like all that's, right. it's, it's in a way it's you personify or you like visualized mm -hmm. Um you know, it's, it's very personal and it's very vulnerable. Um, and so I know I've, I always put a lot of pressure on myself to like, um, you know, everything had to be perfect before people could see it. Like I, um, and I also did a, a ton of realism in high school. So I was like, everything has to be really perfect before mm -hmm. anyone, you know, has to look yeah. real before anyone can see it. Um, and I think, kind of breaking out of that mindset is what I had to do in order to like get over my artist block, if you will. Right. Um, and I remember, um, when I was, I kind of, you know, had a moment with myself. I was like, I can't, like, I need to like start making art again or like doing <laughs> something. Like I, I was like, I don't know. I just feel crazy right now. Yeah. Um, and so I started with just like making like, trying to take the pressure off of myself mm -hmm. to create something like good and just create something and not worry about how it looked, not worry about if it was good, not worry about showing people. Yeah. Um, just like stupid little sketches and, and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's really what kind of snapped me out of it. Um, I can say now that I am in the best place that I've honestly, I've, I've, I feel like I'm in the best place I've ever been with wow. my art. That is um, great. Yeah, just yeah. because I, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I've been doing these brain dump paintings where I just like, I it's literally a brain dump. Like I just pull things from my mind, whatever comes to mind, I write it down. Um, I, you know, find some way to to visualize it, and then I just get it out on paper. And, um, you know, I I do mixed media pieces. It's I paint on it. I use my pastels. I draw. I use pen. I use markers. Um, just kind of whatever I want to do. And I don't yeah. like box it in in any way. Um, and that's felt really good. Um, <laughs> it just, I don't know. It feels, um, it feels like I'm being like very true to myself and to the kind of work that I've always wanted to create. And, um, yeah, sorry, I forgot the original question. No. <laughs> I don't even know where we started. No, we, you were going. You were on point. No, you were. We were. You were trying to describe just how. You know, I was asking about this creative block. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's it's a very interesting take on it, and mm -hmm. I want to maybe further, maybe go back actually to mm -hmm. something that that was interesting that you mentioned, which was how you were referred to as the artist. Yeah, but. I think you would consider yourself more, you, you're a person that creates art. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're a person first. You know, they kind of, the, the art comes later. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, and I think, I think that that's a good sort of opening to how, who you are as a person, mm -hmm. right? You know, having a little bit of Lebanese background, having that American background as well. Yeah. You know, th there's, this fusion of cultures mm -hmm. and um i wonder if, if if that sort of fusion or maybe connection to both of these cultures has had any impact or influence on mm -hmm. on who you are as a person that creates art right you know so that that is something that i you know i i think about and mm -hmm. figured maybe you have something to say about and i think it it would be interesting to maybe explore yeah that's that's a really interesting question um so 
yeah, I guess to elaborate. So my dad, um, he is half Lebanese um, and he grew up in Lebanon. Um, my grandma on that side, she was like born and raised in the South, North Carolina. Um, and then my grandpa is from Lebanon mm-hmm. and um, they met, they had my dad and my aunt and my dad grew up living in Lebanon until he was 16. Um, and then on my mom's side, so she was like born and raised tiny town in North Carolina, very Southern. Um, and both of her parents were from here. Um, so I've got a lot of like Southern roots. Um, Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I've always, I've always loved both sides of my, of my family, um, heritage. Um, and I think my parents have always done a really great job of making sure that, you know, we know where we come from and that we feel connected to it in some way. Right. Um, and I think the biggest way that, um, the biggest way I'm connected to my Middle Eastern heritage is definitely like through food. Um, we just get a ton. I, I know, I but love yeah, <laughs> no, it's actually the best. Um, I know I'm biased, but, um, I, you know, I grew up eating a lot of Lebanese food and just Middle Eastern food in general. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so, you know, I was raised on both my, my grandparents, um, you know, my Nana, my Tata, she would make, both of them would make fried chicken. (laughs) um, And then we'd have that alongside like Tabouli, who, um, which, yeah, which like my (laughs) grandpa would make. And I don't know, it was the best. I, I was so lucky to get to experience that and just. I don't know, have the best food ever. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Chicken, I know. fried chicken and <laughs> fatouche. Oh, yeah. Or tabouda, yeah. Yeah, that's... or fatouche, yeah, both. Okay. Both, yeah. <laughs> and for context, um, this is another salad, folks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> both salads. Um, wow. and, yeah. And, and I think that is also quite fascinating how, you know, you have that connection there, but I think for most of your life, or maybe your entire life, aside from maybe visits abroad, mm-hmm. you, you've lived here. Yeah, you know, in the United States. Yep. Wow. And and like when someone asks you, like what, who, who you are, mm-hmm. like who, who, like what, like when someone tries to understand who you are as a person, mm-hmm. like do you answer by saying, or, or is it contextual? Like you, you answer by saying, I'm American. And with Lebanese heritage or Lebanese mm-hmm. sort of connection, or is it just American, or or how do you, you know, answer that question? That's a good question. Um, I'd say most of the time, like, I mean, you know, obviously looking at me, people are like, oh, that's you know, that's a white girl. She's from North Carolina. You know, just basic <laughs> whatever, which I am. Right. It's true. Yeah. Um, and. You know, Middle Eastern people technically are white, too. So I'd say, you know, that's just who I am. Um, but, yeah, I'd say, you know, I'm I'm American first. And then I've also got Lebanese heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm about a third Lebanese. Oh, third. Um, we don't really know how the genetics did that. You know, we all figured <laughs> we were like a fourth. And then my aunt did um, the ancestry testing. And it turns out, like, me and my siblings and my cousins we're all a third so i oh, guess wow. that was that was pretty strong genes but <laughs> yeah um <laughs> a lot so, of lebanese in you <laughs> right right so yeah i used to i don't know i used to kind of minimize it more and be like oh like that doesn't count but but it does and that's that's a pretty significant amount of mm-hmm. you know my um my heritage and who i am um and it was such an important thing growing up you know it's like my last name it's it's hadad it's um that's a Lebanese name. And um, my middle name is Michael. Um, that's I share it with all of my siblings. That's my dad's first name. Oh. Um, and that's a Middle Eastern um, tradition. All your kids have um, the father's name as their middle name. Um, right. And so, yeah, Ava that's Michael. Yeah. Ava Michael. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> um, I know. Everyone's, I used to like be embarrassed by that when I was little because I was like, oh, it's a boy's name. <laughs> but now I love it. I love it. I wouldn't yeah. change a thing. Um, and I think wow. it's so special that I share that with my siblings too. Right. Wow. And 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 you have had experience in Italy, mm-hmm. and I and I remember talking to a lot of people in Lebanon who you know when they visit Italy, yeah, they tell me that man, it's just the culture is kind of 
similar in in, in a sense mm-hmm. that we're chill, we're laid back. You right. know, it feels like it's it's like Lebanon but more refined. Right. <laughs> and I, yeah. I get that so many times from yeah. the people that go to Italy. You know, and I, I remember even talking to like the head of the Lebanese Studies um, or Lebanese Diaspora Studies Center mm-hmm. here on campus, um, and he's he's Lebanese and and he's lived well. He's Lebanese American. He lived for many years in Lebanon and then he immigrated to the United States. Yeah. And he, you know, he's been to Italy and that's mm-hmm. like a similar testimony yeah. that I've received. So, um, yeah, I mean, when, but, you know, I, I, I wonder when you went there, I mean, if you felt like, man, this kind of feels a little bit similar to how, you know, how it is or how, or, you know, how the culture kind of, it's similar to my mm-hmm. Lebanese culture or, you know, the people that I'm surrounded with that have, surrounded with and have some sort of Lebanese. Heritage. Right. Right. So I would say, um, again, it all goes back to food mm-hmm. <laughs> and just how I grew up. Um, so I'd say my dad, my dad's a big foodie for um, lack of a better term. Um, <laughs> and he, you know, that's kind of how we were raised. Again, we were very lucky to have such um both my parents are really great cooks um, and they've always cooked like delicious and healthy meals for us. Um, and so we were raised on, you know, like when, when I was teething as a baby, we used to have a, a wooden garlic masher and my parents mm. would give us the garlic masher to like chew on while we were teething. <laughs> so, That's so cute. yeah, I bet we had wow. horrible breath, <laughs> but, <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, you know, so we were, um, I was very lucky to be exposed to so many different foods and, um, to me, that's a huge part of community and family. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like on both sides of my family, it's, you know, this even like the Southern roots too, it's very centered around food yeah. um, and kind of coming together, especially like, um, you know, the women on the Southern side, you know, it's, it's traditionally like the women are in the kitchen and they're, they're cooking and that's, that's when you have community time and that's, mm-hmm. you know, um, like just being there with your your family and and cooking together and then um on my dad's side like my dad and my grandpa are the ones that cook so wow um which i've always loved i'm like okay yeah like that's that. how as they should as they should right. um so yeah. you know the men are in the kitchen when <laughs> Rolls of i'm at yeah when i'm at my um grandparents house so wow. Um, that's very interesting to kind of see yeah you know, play out i know time. yeah i think it's awesome <laughs> wow. um but yeah. going back to um, like my experience in Italy and stuff. Um, so also while traveling, my parents think traveling is really important. Um, mm-hmm. And again, I've been I've been very fortunate to be able to travel a lot um, throughout my life. Um, and and you mentioned you've been twice to Italy. Yes, I've been yeah. I've been to Italy twice. Um, I went when I was sixteen, and then I went last summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was with my whole family when I was sixteen. Um, and I know specifically for my dad, um, whenever we travel, you know, big emphasis on food. Like we, we look for the little hole in the wall places and, you know, we, we try to find the craziest stuff and, um, you know, we, we try to find the like dinky little restaurants where, you know, there, there's two people running the whole place and it's, it's quiet. There's no one in there. We're like, this is a place with the good food, you know? (laughs) And (laughs) yeah. And it's, it's always, it's always true. Um, but yeah, I think that mindset and then, um, the, I'd say like cuisine wise, you know, both are like very olive oil heavy and Mm -hmm. like, um, if you look at like authentic Italian food and stuff, it's, there are a lot of similarities, just like, you know, fresh, yeah. um, whole foods and healthy oils. And, um, I'd say, um, Italian food has a lot more dairy, mm. but yeah. So there, there are definitely similarities there, um, just in the cuisines. Um, and then, you know, the, the emphasis on family and the emphasis on community and yeah. community through food, um, you know, and sitting down and, um, like my parents when um when they like to travel and when we travel with them um you know when we have dinner we don't just sit down and eat and okay run off you know we we sit and we chat mm-hmm. and we talk the whole family for a long time and and growing up like you know we were not allowed to eat on our own like it was family dinner every night every yeah. night and i'm i'm so <laughs> grateful for that and i was always right. shocked when i was like 
you know, I'd, I'd hear that other people didn't do that. And I was like, oh, yeah, man, it's not like common. we were <laughs> not, especially a, not in here. Yeah. Yeah. I had no <laughs> idea. I was like, we were not allowed to, you know, no phones, nothing. You know, right. we, we sat and we talked with each other and talked about our days and our lives. Um, and so I'm sure that, you know, part of that comes from um, the differences in my parents' mm-hmm. backgrounds and um yeah so that's definitely those are some parallels between you know things in Italy and which I'm you know not an expert or anything <laughs> but you know just just what I've experienced yeah. um and wow. seen when we um I'd love to maybe kind of maybe go back a little bit to mm-hmm. your trip in Florence and sure. painting um you you mentioned you were there this past summer. Yes. And there was a lot of, um, it was a painting program? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what would you, how was that sort of experience that was kind of art focused mm-hmm. different from the experience you've had when you were 16? Were you kind of seeing things differently? Were you kind of viewing the world from a different lens? Yeah. What, how would you maybe describe that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um. I mean, definitely uh, from the perspective, you know, I was there by myself and I was there with one of my best friends and, Mm -hmm. you know, I was an adult there. um, So a lot more independent, um, kind of exploring the city like, you know, I was without my mom and dad and (laughs) it was it was weird, but it was fun. Um, And um, so there was that aspect of it. Um, And then from an art standpoint, yeah, I would say like I think just in general as someone that does art um i i do look at things a lot of times and i um i i try to think of like you know like when i'm sightseeing i'm like oh like that would make a good painting mm-hmm. or like you know i'll take photos specifically to paint them later yeah. or like um i'll see things happen in real time and i'll like write it down and be like that that should go into something you know <laughs> like i don't know what it's going to go into but yeah I, it needs to be in something um or like, you know, even just how I'm feeling during a certain experience. Like I'll, I'll write it down in my notes app and be like, you know, this is um, this is what's happening right now. And like maybe I'm listening to a song and I'm like, oh, like this just makes me like feel this very specific thing. And so I'll write it down so that maybe I can mm-hmm. like, you know, so I can like hope to capture it later. Yeah. Um, and, you know, half the time I don't. I just I forget about these things. But um yeah, I definitely um, do find myself um, noticing things from, uh, I guess, an artist's perspective in yeah. a way. Um, even if it's just like colors, like looking at something being like, oh, those are really great colors. <laughs> yeah. They need to be in a painting. Like this Lego set we have in front of us right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so so I'll go through my camera roll later and I'll, I'll be like, why did I take a picture of this? like piece of trash or something <laughs> or like, or like this um, like spot of rust or, you know, yeah. it's because I liked the colors. <laughs> right. Right. So no, that's such an artist thing. Yeah, say, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, wow. That is really fascinating. Cause I, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't think I have that sense. Like it's, it's mm. not something, I'm not sure if it, if it's acquired or if it's in, in like I don't know. built yeah. in you in a way. Like I can, Maybe with clothes, maybe mm-hmm. I can like sense things and you right. know look at what, what matches, what doesn't, what sort of colors work, right? You know, yeah. But at like a general view of the world from an artist's lens, I think it takes mm-hmm. an artist to have that view. Yeah, <laughs> right? I don't know. That's um, yeah, that's something I've wondered about before. Yeah. Um, I think skills, obviously, like anyone can learn a skill, and mm-hmm. you know, to to be a good painter or drawer or like um have good technical skills like you do have to practice them and they are learned things like no yeah. one's just born like being able to you know I mean well maybe some people are I don't know but <laughs> you know throughout my whole life is how I've like built up my skills and stuff but mm-hmm. I think seeing things a certain way um I don't know I think I think some people definitely are just you know people do have like an eye for stuff yeah um and I've never like, I don't know, I've never like considered myself to, but I've been told that I do mainly mm-hmm. like by my mom. Like she's, she's so sweet. She's 
the best. But shout out to your mom. Yeah, shout out to my mom. <laughs> she's I mean, the mom. Family, you're the best. I mean. <laughs> yeah, she's the best. Um, yeah, but yeah, my whole family. Um, <laughs> but she's always told me, um, you know, she she sees things in such a beautiful way, um, and you know, hopefully, some of that's rubbed off on me. And you know, I've been I've been told that by her before. Um, that you know, I see things in a different way than Mm -hmm. a lot of people would or I don't know and I don't I don't know what to accredit that to I don't know if it's just because I've kind of trained my eye to um pick up on certain things because I'm thinking about art in the back of my mind or I don't know um but Mm -hmm. yeah like I mentioned like it happens with music too so I don't know it's it's a weird thing to like talk about I've never really (laughs) I don't know. I don't think about it much. Sorry, just I had kinda... to put you in the spot there. No, that's okay. <laughs> I yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really think about it. It just mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of natural. For yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Like you never vocalized it before. You know, no. put it into words. No, it I just haven't. is. Yeah, it's yeah. just how my mind works, I guess. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know if it's like unique or uh, maybe everyone does this i don't know <laughs> no, <laughs> Just, i, I can personally say yeah. i you know i don't have the sort of artist lens turned yeah. on 24 <laughs> seven <laughs> yeah in yeah my brain. um but um yeah i want to i'd love to kind of wrap things up and and you sure. know i i i've i'm just fascinated by the work that you've done and you know the stories that you've shared this is incredible mm-hmm. um i want to ask you a final question here sure. um what would you say to your first year designer Ava? Oh gosh. Now that you are <laughs> <laughs> now that you're you've graduated and you have maybe a different perspective and right. I feel like you like you said, you know, you're in the best place that, you know, um maybe the best place that you've ever been in. Yeah. Uh, in um, years. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Um <laughs> probably like get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um get on anxiety meds um oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no um i would say um yeah it's just it's not that deep it's not that serious um just make stuff mm-hmm. you know just kind of again like get over yourself it's not not everything has to be perfect or presentable um and just be and just be more open to to learning new styles and to um yeah to to seeing things in a different way yeah knock on wood yeah <laughs> well, uh, thank you Ava, for joining me i really enjoyed yeah, this conversation of course yeah. thank you for having me absolutely